Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, the go-to place for authoritative information and strategies on special needs, learning disabilities, and disorders, especially ADHD. This video is the first in a series that will provide an understanding of the social development that children with ADHD may experience. In this series, we will be covering how social distancing and the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic can impact our children, how communication and behavior can look different for a child with ADHD, building and keeping successful relationships with parents and friends, and how social anxiety can impede the day-to-day -day life of a child with ADHD. We know that a lot of families are now forced to stay at home, so we have prepared a plan of action that you and your family can use during this time to help you adapt to the new reality and thrive. My team and I have researched extensively to provide parents, teachers, and caregivers with helpful tools and strategies during this crisis. We will cover information by esteemed and authoritative resources like the Child Mind Institute, the National Institute of Mental Health, NIMH, chad.org, and many other cutting edge organizations in the field of ADHD. We will also be sharing resources, tools, and strategies that were recommended by leading experts in the field during our ADHD in Middle School Summit hosted in January 2020. Some examples of the experts we have had the privilege of working with are Dr. Edward Ernette Hollowell, Dr. Peg Dawson, Elaine Taylor Klaus, and Diane Dempster, Melissa Orloff, Cindy Goldrich, Mr. Daniel Kramarski, Leslie Josell, and many other world-class experts and thought leaders in the field of ADHD. These resources have been used by thousands of families to help aid both parents and kids living with ADHD. But as both a medical and health disclaimer, I am not a doctor and this video does not provide medical or health advice. It is intended for informational purposes only and it is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Never ignore professional medical advice or seeking treatment because of something you have heard on this YouTube channel or from Smart Course as a whole. If you think you may have a medical emergency, immediately call your doctor or dial 911. ADHD patient symptoms vary significantly, so it is important to speak with your physician or medical professional in order to come up with a tailored approach that works specifically for you and your child. That being said, and all things being clear, let's go over what this video will cover. Today, we will be discussing how social distancing and the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic can have an effect on children, especially those with ADHD. Living in this new reality has been difficult for everyone around the world. Maintaining social distancing is crucial to help stop the spread and flatten the curve of this viral pandemic. The lack of social interaction may have a challenging effect on children with ADHD. During the growth phase of childhood, particularly the middle school years, social distancing can have certain effects on psychological and intellectual development. The comfort of touch and closeness is lost when children are asked to play six feet apart from one another. Furthermore, caretakers and parents who must wear masks and even face shields make it impossible to allow children to read emotions that are otherwise clearly noticeable. Children can get confused as to why their teachers cannot approach them, and this may lead to negative impressions in the child's mind. That is why it is so important to explain to your children why we are social distancing and allow them to ask questions. While summer break is still underway, staying home and having fun together as a family where your child can freely play with siblings is the best type of social interaction they can receive. The brain goes through one of the biggest growth spurts during adolescence, making long-term isolation more significant for teenage years. Skills, beliefs, value systems, and much more are being developed that can go on to influence the rest of one's life. In order to ensure your child never feels isolated at home, play games every day. Be sure to get some sort of physical exercise in 30 minutes per day. Remember, this can be a walk with the dog, a catch in the backyard, or a swim in the pool. Avoid spending days on the couch and watching TV all day long. Too much screen time normally should be avoided as well, but since we are in strange times, allowing your child some time online chatting with friends should be allowed. Not allowing your child to connect with peers on Facebook, Twitter, or house party is one of the worst things you could do during the quarantine. Any social interaction that your child can get is critical. 
be sure to look out for signs of depression through excessive anger, sadness, and aggression. As a parent, ensure that your child is staying disciplined and pacified throughout quarantine. If you haven't already, check out our ADHD at Home series that will give you tips on organization and time management. Also, always stay in touch with your child's specialist and pediatrician to explain to them the symptoms caused by isolation. As children get older, peer groups become an important piece of social development, more so than family at this point in the growth phase. Since children are becoming much more socially adept in adolescence, parents are likely to be worried about how social distancing is impacting their children. If quarantine only lasts a few months, children are likely to bounce back very quickly. It is easy for kids to become lonely and these trying times call for parents to share some additional attention and support. In late childhood and adolescent years, kids start forming friendships that are more complex and more about shared interests. The relationship skills that are being practiced at this time allow children to try new things, meet different people, and learn new skills that will help navigate their adult friendships. During this time, children are learning how to find and provide support for their friends, building trust, and coping with betrayal that will all help them later in life. The skills that are developed, the beliefs that are formed, the way children perceive themselves, and how they interact with the world during adolescence helps define who they will become as adults. Developing and maintaining friendships are very challenging when done remotely or while social distancing. Luckily, our children have grown up in a world filled with technology, socializing with friends virtually for their entire lives. While social distancing continues, teens may be adapting better than adults with these newfound social rules in place. FaceTime sleepovers, long video chats, getting together for a group Netflix party with some popcorn, and joining house party with your friend group are just some of the ways to maintain social interaction during this pandemic. Now, Quarantine has probably made the word boredom become very popular in your household. Don't worry, boredom is a good thing for children with ADHD sometimes. During this crisis, families can slow down, reconnect, reset sleep schedules, implement fun and structured routines, and just breathe. Graduations and field trips may have been missed, but use this time to build a positive family dynamic that sometimes gets lost in the hectic, busy lives we had before the coronavirus. While virtual interactions are very beneficial throughout the quarantine, they are not meant to be a substitute for real world interactions. The connection, level of intimacy, subtle interactions and spontaneous responses, and the give and take that is gained in person cannot be replicated. The sharing, taking turns, and resolving conflicts that children take part in at school and clubs are a big part of their social development that happens outside of the family and friend groups. The isolation faced while at home decreases the amount of new experiences, along with interactions with authority, varying group dynamics, and handling a variety of situations. These activities allow children to explore their identities and slowly uncover new parts of themselves. During quarantine, only children may be feeling more lonely than children that have siblings. But parents should be aware that sibling relationships cannot replace friendships and the skills needed to develop them. There are several things all parents can do to help build social skills at home now and for the post-pandemic future. First, be sure to provide opportunities for interactive play, such as playing board games with family members. Instead of simply sitting in front of a screen all day or talking on the phone for hours, an interactive board game can allow kids to practice taking turns, negotiate, and build social skills. Have extended family or friends join in through FaceTime, and you can make it a weekly get-together. Find simple and fun games that your child will enjoy, and at the same time, challenge them to think, problem-solve, and expand their skills. Next, children at this age may get stressed out by the fact that their family is constantly around them and their friends are not. Parents should always respect their child's need for space and simply make it known you are there for support when it is needed. Turning towards your peer relationships is normal in the middle school years and never take it personally that your child seems to be pushing you away. As we all slowly move back to normal life, allowing a play date or meet up at the local park with a friend while following the CDC's guidelines 
has the potential to make your child weep. It is also helpful to understand your child's need to be online. Since there is a lack of social interaction, your child will want to make up that time online, talking with their friends and playing interactive games. Educate yourself on popular teen apps so you can set safety parameters and time limits for your child. Make it known that you will want to see what they have been doing online once in a while, so by educating yourself, you won't be lost in translation. This can also be a fun weekly agenda that can be a bonding moment and a time where your child feels comfortable sharing information with you and you're staying up to date on their online endeavors. Remember to also stick to a schedule and get plenty of sleep. Your child losing just one hour of sleep can ruin the entire next day. Physical activity is needed daily and one night make it a dance party. Be fun and creative to get your family up and moving. Lastly, do not stop your child's medication just because everyone is staying home. Always contact your child's physician when making decisions about medication. But experts are saying that during quarantine, medication should not be stopped and the previous regimen that your child held should be continued. Another fun tip is for every family member to share one thing they are grateful for, either during breakfast, dinner, or whenever is best for you. This exercise can help emotional stability and be a great bonding technique for the family. Also, creating some fun, special moments with you and your child can include making up stories together and going back and forth, each saying a couple of sentences. The stories that children can come up with are often hilarious and inventive and can cause a big laugh and happy moment. Create a family journal that everyone either draws a picture in or writes a few sentences about their day or how they are feeling. This can be good practice to target your child's emotions and ask them what, if anything, is bothering them. Have a picnic in your backyard, dance around the kitchen, do anything that creates positive emotions because the more your child experiences positivity, the less negative emotions they will face. In our upcoming video, we will be discussing how children with ADHD tend to communicate and behave in terms of social development. For an expert curated list of resources from our past summit and videos, in particular, understood.org's Five Ways ADHD Can Affect Social Skills, please visit the link in the description. To make sure you're as prepared as you can be, I want you to hit the notification bell below and join our newsletter because we'll be sharing much more resources on how to help your family cope better with ADHD, both at school and at home. If you like this video, please don't forget to like it and let us know what you liked or what you'd like to see more of in the comments below. The more people like, subscribe, click the bell and comment, the more people will see this kind of content on YouTube and we know some people could really use the help. If you haven't watched our previous series about the best music for the ADHD brain, click the annotation on the top right of your screen to watch those videos. We'll be sharing information about upcoming videos on this YouTube channel and exclusive deals in our newsletter. So again, hit the notification bell and the subscribe button under the video and sign up for our newsletters using the link in the description to get early access to and exclusive deals on our resources. For even more specific information, step-by-step -step guides, and access to professionals who can help you through this process, please sign up for our online course or upcoming summit in August using the links in the description. We share tons of expert vetted resources on parenting and education for differently abled kids, just like kids with ADHD. So make sure to check out our previous videos and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications for videos to come. As always, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for watching and see you all soon.